All right, let's get popping with our first article about Charm Industrial removing carbon from the atmosphere for the tech company Stripe. And I want to give a quick shout out to our friend Johnny Henderson. Thanks for being a great friend of the pod and for suggesting for suggesting this awesome article. We're excited about it. Johnny's a super fan. Yeah. We, we love Johnny. We love you, Johnny. Um, let's get rolling on it. All right, so if you're unaware of the overall concept of carbon offsets, basically it's a mechanism for companies to purchase carbon removal from the atmosphere to offset their own emissions. And that's because, like, say I'm a tech company, it might be more efficient for me to pay you to plant trees for me than for me as a tech company to learn how to plant trees and create that infrastructure on my own. So overall, it's a good concept, but in practice, it's a little different. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. It's important to note that it's like kind of controversial because there was actually like a Bloomberg article about it. These companies want to show that they're doing something good and green, but their carbon offset projects aren't actually taking any additional carbon out of the atmosphere. So in the article they wrote, like companies like JP Morgan and Disney were paying to protect forests that were not in danger to begin with. <laughs> and then they were using the carbon that those trees are capturing to offset their own emissions. Yeah, that's and like sketchy. apparently like eighty five percent of these efforts are like with aligned with that kind of behavior. Yeah, so needless to say, and with that information in mind, it's pretty conservative to say that many carbon offset efforts are sketchy or a sham at best. Um, So Charm, enter Charm, they're trying to basically create a new, better way that is actually taking carbon out of the atmosphere and sequestering it, which is just a, you know, carbon sequestration is just a fancy term for taking carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it somewhere. And in this case, they're trying to store it deep in the earth. Um, kind of like what uh, Prometheus was doing with their jet fuel. Exactly. Right? So we talked yeah, about yeah. Prometheus fuels, taking carbon dioxide out of the air and turning it into jet fuel. Charm is doing that, but instead of being net neutral like Prometheus is, they're trying to actually be ne- carbon net negative. So they take carbon dioxide okay. out of the air and they bury it deep in the ground, basically returning it to where carbon used to be before we started burning all these fossil fuels. Where, where are they putting it in the ground? Well, so here's the thing is they, their approach is they take biomass right now. They're focusing just on like wood waste, lumber waste and wood chips and sawdust. And, okay. uh, they turn it into this bio oil and this ash, and then they inject it into holes in the ground, into wells. Why, why don't they like, I don't know. Why don't they just like dig holes? Instead of like, does that make more sense? Making the oil and everything. Yeah, like why don't they just dig a hole and just put the the wood in there? Yeah, well, so they talked about companies that have been doing this that they just dig giant holes and then bury a bunch of crap in there so that it doesn't off gas. And the reason they're talking about biomass here is because um, all this like compost that we have, all this organic matter, when it's breaking down, there's microbes eating it and they're actually releasing carbon dioxide and methane into the air. So like Okay. Gotcha. If if you go take a tree and you cut it down and it rots in the wood, there's actually carbon emissions from that. The CO two makes it into the atmosphere. So instead of letting it get into the air, they're gonna bury it in the ground so it degrades anaerobically and there's no carbon emissions. But instead of just digging a hole in the ground they're turning it into this oil and an ash and they're doing that because it's more scalable. And so they don't have to go dig big holes because we already have wells that are empty that we dug to drill for oil and to drill for water years and years ago. So they're using these old abandoned wells and they're turning them into injection wells to store carbon deep in the earth's crust. Okay. So hold up. If they're going to the same areas where they, we used to like get crude oil and they're putting this stuff back in it doesn't that like mess with the environment like drinking water the surrounding wildlife like is that a concern at all well they're working closely with the epa to make sure that they're not affecting the drinking water quality at all and the epa has different classes of wells based on their depth and how close they are to the water table and i think there's they go from class one to class five and uh charm has found a way to be uh you know symbiotic with the environment in some way that the EPA has cleared them to be able to use multiple different classes of these wells to inject their oil into. So they're doing a good job with the drinking water. And as far as seismic activity goes, they basically do admit that by pumping stuff into the earth, you can lubricate the faults between the tectonic plates, basically making it easier for tectonic plates to shift, maybe increasing the amount of earthquakes and things that we have. 
they understand that that's an issue, but they're basically saying what we're doing is such a tiny drop in the bucket compared to how much brine is being injected to frack and stuff like that. So they're basically saying they're moving a needle a lot on carbon sequestration without moving the needle a lot on seismic activity. Okay. That makes sense. They, they're they aware of their drawbacks. They seem to actually be doing something that is positive, that is actually taking carbon out of the atmosphere. Do you have any numbers on this? Yeah, that's, I, that's what I wanted to talk about next is the numbers. So for every okay. one ton of this bio oil that they have, um, it basically sequesters a net 1.53 tons of carbon dioxide. And the way that works is they put it in this pyrolysis process, they get this carbon-rich oil, and then they also get this oxi- ox- oxygen-rich ash that they spread. They use that as fertilizer. And then the rich o- carbon-rich oil is what they're injecting into the earth. So for every one ton of this oil that they make, 1.53 tons of CO2 that would have been emitted is now sequestered in the earth. That's great. Wow, that's actually If you take into solid. account the production, the transport, the injection, all that energy expenditures, they still net around 1.44 tons of CO2 sequestered in the earth. So, I mean, it seems like a pretty efficient way of doing this. And they basically say, out of all the waste that there is in the world, all this biomass waste that, you know, is unused right now, if they could even use just a tiny fraction of waste food or waste crops or waste wood, they could start to sequester giga, like literally gigatons, millions of tons of CO2 every single year. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Jeez. So it started with this tech company Stripe. They delivered on their commitment early to them. There's another few tech companies signing on. I think Microsoft did as well. It's exciting. That's what I was going to ask you about. Like, are other people getting on board now that they kind of proved themselves with Stripe? Yeah, they've got some early adopters and it it seems to be moving well. That's exciting, man. Again, uh, I'm happy you brought up the fact that like this is... This is a controversial area. Every time I hear about like carbon offsetting, my eyebrows kind of raised. But you know what? Kudos to them. It looks like they're trying to do the right thing. They're aware of their drawbacks with the process. And yeah, I'm excited for uh, where, where this project goes. But 